Hi, I'm Ella and I'm the Plants Meow and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing my highly anticipated houseplant tour. So the last time I did one, it was in the summertime. A lot has changed since then. My love for anthuriums has certainly grown. So <laughs> that's definitely going to be its whole own little segment. So I want to give a shout out to La La Lee's who guessed that I had 76 anthuriums. I do have a total of 69 at the moment. A lot of other people had guests probably closest in the 50s and then high ends in the hundreds, which <laughs> I don't have. I also want to give a shout out to Botanical Binge because she actually made a list of the anthuriums that I have and I think that was super awesome and I love her enthusiasm. So please go follow these two girls on Instagram. They have amazing Instagram pages. So based on the tallies that I put out on YouTube and Instagram, it'll be one long video. So when I told Phil here how long his video was, he was just like, what? Nah, -uh. he just couldn't believe it. It was just completely ridiculous. I don't even know why it's this long. <laughs> so how you'll see this video go is it'll progress very similar to my first houseplant tour where I go into my kitchen, my eating room, family room, bedroom, and then finally my plant room. I do want to mention that due to time, I won't be showcasing my greenhouse and the plants in there, and I'll be making a separate video for that. So I do apologize. So I hope you do all enjoy this video. I know I'm calling it a winter house plant tour and it's not quite winter yet. I think we're officially about like a week away, but honestly, it's been snowing in places. Christmas things are up. I'm calling this the winter. It would be really weird to call it fall right now. <laughs> so that's what it is. So over here, I still have my ZZ plants. So here's just my regular ZZ plant. He's just kind of loving his life. <laughs> and right behind it, I'm gonna pull this guy out, is my variegated ZZ plant. Absolutely gorgeous. I think eventually this one, once it gets bigger, I'll probably move it. I don't know if I'll put it somewhere like on the floor of my family room or even on top of one of my dressers in the bedroom, but I really want him to kind of have his own place where he can flourish. He's just so stunning. So forgive me because I don't remember the names of these African violets, but I will put them below if I can find them. This is one of my variegated African violets, and I think it's so cute because it has a little bit of a rounder leaf than my others, and it's super, super adorable, easy to take care of. Over here, this much larger African violet, I did get these two at the same time, but I had potted this one in this pot a lot sooner. <laughs> and if you pot African violets into a bigger pot, they will grow so much larger. It is insane. My mom actually did the same thing with hers and hers is gigantic now. <laughs> so this is cute. The older leaves, you can tell there's a lot of variegation there. They're right by a window, so I'm not quite sure why the uh, newer leaves don't have as much. Maybe it's just because they still need to grow. But either way, it's such a cute plant. <laughs> and over here, we have my last African violet. And this one has a more ruffled texture to the leaves. And I really like it. it, has this little iridescent glow to it. And what I really like about all these African violets is they have this pink underneath. Very alien, very, very cute. My Philodendron gigas. So he came to me and he had a bit of rot, so I cut off all his old roots. He's growing new ones in there now, so he'll be absolutely fine. But yeah, that's a, a cute little gigas. I feel like I have really bad luck with root rot when it comes to melanocrysums and philodendron gigases. <laughs> so err on the side of caution and put them in really well-draining soil. I actually left this one in the sphagnum that it came in and that's how it rotted. So that's why I'm really not quite a fan of leaving stuff in sphagnum, especially when it's tightly wound because you don't know what's going on in there. <laughs> So over here, I have my Raven's Easy plant. 
looking its finest. Hasn't given me any new growth yet, but I'm okay with that. I was a little mad at first, but she's gorgeous. She can take her time. <laughs> I expect a lot more new growth the next coming spring season. And over here on the table, we have one of the terrariums from my terrarium building video. So this is actually Chris's. It's so beautiful that I just opted to keep it on our kitchen table. <laughs> I really like the way it looks. And it's something you can really have just out all year long. And it's fantastic looking. So over here, when we have Nina, you'll notice in this video, she's gonna be sleeping probably in quite a few spots. She likes to travel a house with me <laughs> and just fall asleep in different areas. So over here, I have my Scandapsis pictus exotica. Love, love the large leaves of this plant. It is super stunning. It's been growing a bit sparse toward the ends. I'm not quite sure why at the moment. Could be because lately he's had a lack of sun. Not sure. I actually might end up um, pruning these and propagating them and maybe planting them back in because for a while he was growing pretty bushy and then he just kind of decided to stop growing leaves. <laughs> also, I didn't fertilize him really this year, so it may have been he just needed the fertilizer and I didn't pro provide him the proper nutrients for him to grow. So that is a bit on me, but I will be better the next spring. <laughs> and over here is my begonia looking glass. Chris really loves this plant. It's not one that I think I'll be keeping out here in the kitchen, but it's here for now. Really, really pretty. This is one of my begonias from Tennessee Tropicals that I did not expect to be so large. So they don't quite showcase what they're gonna look like. They kind of just show you a bunch of them together in a picture and you really don't know how big they are. If you order from them, guys, I promise you, you'll be getting some big plants. It's kind of insane, just how big. So over here, we have my Epipremnoides. From my last video, um, I'm trying to remember. I think I had showcased that it was propagating. So this is leaf that's left. It had lost the other two, but it's had this one for a long time now, and I believe it's growing a new one in there. It's doing fine now. <laughs> Down here is the rare and elusive Scandapsis pictus silver lady. Let me just show you a better view on her. So I actually got her with minimal to no roots. So that was really disappointing. This leaf here had no roots and I just put her back in the soil here. So it had lost whatever other leaves it had. I'm lucky that I have these remaining, so that was really, really disappointing. But honestly, I'm just thrilled to have this plant in my collection at the moment. Up here is my philodendron brantiatum. I'm gonna bring her down, cause I'm too short for this life. So this gorgeous creature, I will put to the link to the shop in my description and the name of who I bought it down below. I meant to do an unboxing of this plant. I never got around to it. And she has some great plants for great prices. So please go check her out. I actually bought two of these. I believe they were about $16 each. And I kind of just planted them together because I wanted a more full plant. This plant is just absolutely beautiful. So, so happy. And is a much quicker grower than my smaller one that I had. Very glad to have this one. Just look how stunning that leaf is. So the first one here is my Philodendron Brazil. And it has gotten, like all of these, <laughs> fairly large. Particularly this one. He is so much more spread out than my previous houseplant tour. I bought all of these very small, specifically because I wanted to kind of see them grow. And I was going to tame them more and maybe make only a single trail. But now I'm thinking I kind of like the bushier look. 
All right, and for my next one, there is my Hartley philodendron, the philodendron heteraceum, and this one has a really long trail going, so I'm really proud of this one. It's not too bushy on top at the moment, it has started to spread out its trails on the sides too. This is a super, super cute trailing plant, and I absolutely love it. It's also very rigorous compared to the others. I think the others are focusing on a more bushier look and he's been focusing on his trail and he's just started to recently bush out on the sides. I think it's interesting what they choose to kind of grow. And the next one is the lovely Philodendron Mikens. So he was working on his bushing for a while and he has finally started to trail, which is fantastic. He's absolutely stunning and I've been asked before um, when these grow up they grow up to be like a melanocrysum and I pretty much would tell you that they would grow up to look like a smaller melanocrysum not a large one but very similar so <laughs> if you want a kind of easygoing plant and you're worried about keeping a mel melano alive then I would definitely go with this one here I think he's much easier to keep and less susceptible to rot and really freaking beautiful <laughs> Just, oh, the villaininess. Like, why wouldn't you want one of these? Definitely one of my favorites. And they have these really cute, adorable, like kind of reddish backs. So pretty. And next to that one is my lemon lime philodendron. This one has been working on the bushy life for sure. So all this growth on top, very new interesting he hasn't really started trail maybe like right here but he's definitely been working on filling himself out he gives me a hard time watering him just because how bushy he is but i absolutely love the plant the color is gorgeous i love all trailing philodendrons i just think they're absolutely stunning just so cute all right, and the last three at the end, because my first four were philodendron. These are just all Epipremnum aureum, so they're all pothos. So here is just my neon pothos. Just how beautiful is this one? I know I've actually seen someone just post like them having this trail up their wall and it just looks stunning. He's very, very easygoing. So if you prefer a more regular leaf shape than to the heart leaf, definitely go with these. But I think they're both absolutely stunning and I'm pretty much always gonna keep both of them in my collection. And then we have my Enjoy. This one I initially wasn't gonna keep. I wasn't too big of a fan of it, especially after I got my Manjula Pothos, but then like, I don't know, it grew on me. <laughs> like, I actually really like the variegation now. I think it's, it got really cute and bushy. <laughs> and I think it's so adorable. Honestly, I'm just really big on trailing plants though. I see myself always having them and no matter how common they are, I think they're just absolutely gorgeous and I want to one of each variety. <laughs> and my last one here, I actually have two of these. The bigger one is in my family room. This gorgeous specimen is my golden pothos. He's been such a happy camper up there, like most of these guys have, <laughs> growing very well. Like, it's kind of fun to go back and watch my first house plant tour and see how much these guys have grown, even through photos. It's just really awesome. And they're growing in different ways. Like, he's very curved out and spread compared to others. Just really interesting to kind of see how they all choose to grow differently, but just really, really gorgeous. What's interesting here is that he has a lot of irrigation and my other one is right up by a window and it doesn't have as much. So it's curious because I always thought a lot more light gave these guys more irrigation, which seems to be true for my Marble Queen, but not for this one. <laughs> And over here by my beautiful fireplace, I have my Calathea rotundifolia. So this actually got from Plantarina. I sold my smaller one and got this one. It came in amazing. Shipping was fantastic. I would highly suggest getting a plant from her if you are looking for anything on her website. Plant is very full and very beautiful. She has it under the name Calathea fasciata. Insanely stunning. So it is a sister plant to Orbifolia. So if you wanted something with a bit darker foliage than the Orbifolia, then this is certainly the plant for you. 
For me, it fits and complements the plants in my family room very well. I have my Dark Lord philodendron over here, who, yes, none of you, unless you follow me on Instagram, you had no idea I had this plant. <laughs> so this plant here, oh, I've had for probably right after my last house plant tour. It's freaking stunning. I absolutely love it. It has these gorgeous burgundy petioles. Its leaves grow in this bright red color. I'll post a picture here of what one will look like. I was hoping this one would be fully developed or opened up or unfurled before this video, but it was not. So the backs of these leaves are this really gorgeous, like burgundy plum color. It looks more red on my camera than it really is. It's really a deep, dark purple. How gorgeous. So if it's given more light, the tops of the leaves will actually turn more of a green color. Stunning, really gorgeous green. <laughs> And this one over here, you can tell it's a little bit of a darker green color. And over here was a leaf that I had unfurled when I got it. So you can tell I give it less light. So it's more of a purpley black color. Gorgeous, gorgeous leaf. It was actually coming in when I received it. So it got a little bit of damage here and there, but honestly, it's stunning and it's gonna remain that color. So I'm so happy with it. But that is my Dark Lord philodendron. Like, I feel like I can't show you enough of it. It's just incredibly large. So over here we have my Scandapsis pictus silveryan. I just love how the edges just looked dipped in silver. Super, super pretty. <laughs> so over here we have my Marimo moss ball. And I've recently put him with some aquarium stones. Actually gotta change his water out. So don't look too closely at it. <laughs> and then over here we have an unknown Scandapsis pictus. They call this one silver satin, but really the one that is supposed to be going by silver satin, which is inaccurate, is the Scandapsis pictus argyreus over here. So that's technically its nickname. And you can tell the differences because this one's actually lined with silver. So unlike this gorgeous one here, this one has no silver on the edges. So that is quite different. And then over here is my wonderful Scandapsis Pictus Jade. I wanted one of these for so long. So when Legends of Monstera posted one, I absolutely had to have it. I am obsessed with all things Scandapsis Pictus. <laughs> all right, in this corner, I have a bunch of my Monsteras. So I actually had let the humidity get too low. Now they have their own humidifier back here, but I got some browning on my leaf. So here's the yellow variegated Monstera. And I believe this is this the regular Deliciosa. I don't think this is the Borsia Gianna. And this one I believe is the Borsia Gianna, the yellow variegated version. And I love, love, love the variegation on this one. I think if you're considering a yellow or you're not sure to absolutely get one because they are stunning. I've got a new leaf growing back here finally. I actually fortunately had a bit of rot on this one. So water propagated it, stuck it in soil. Now I got that new leaf, so everything's good. <laughs> Same situation here, except this one, when I received it, it was already rotted from Bogona pot plants. So it finally got a good amount of roots and it popped out this new leaf. So it's a baby leaf, there's not much to it, but my beautiful, very sensitive yellow variegated monsteras. And here my Thai constellation from Camilla's House of Plants. As you know, I've done a video on it. If you remember, it had two more leaves. Problem with this plant 
is it started browning and I wasn't quite sure why because at the time humidity was still good. I actually unpotted this plant and found that there was no new growth on the roots and that it looks like the node was cut through. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is not something I apparently checked when I potted it initially. I'm really disappointed and unhappy and I'm still praying it will root, but I've already accepted that it probably will not. So I'm down to this last beautiful, beautiful leaf. And this may or, not, may or may not be the last time you do see her. I'm still hoping that there was a chance that it might not have been cut all the way, but it's very, very slim, but she's beautiful. I absolutely loved high constellations. So as a backup, I do have this tie constellation that I've recently received. So he's a little crinkled for being in the mail. I got him for a ridiculously good price. So at least I do have him just kind of there in case. And if not, if she's fine, then I have two tie constellation monsters. I was so panicked and devastated that I was just keeping watch out for one for a long time now. And when that one popped up, I just bought it. So here's to holding out. I hope this beautiful creature lives. But uh, yeah. <laughs> so up here we have my other Gilden Pothos that I mentioned. And it loves its life. <laughs> so while the variegation isn't too strong, it's growing quite vigorously, which is interesting because it is right by a window. But yeah. <laughs> it's kind of just doing its thing. It just might be a plant that just produces less, which I don't mind at all, because even if it turned into a completely jade pothos, that doesn't bother me. I already have my other golden pothos. In fact, I don't have a regular jade, so <laughs> if it so chose, I would not be upset with its choice of life. <laughs> She's very beautiful. Her name is actually Guinevere. Initially, I talked about in the first video about staking her, but I kind of just really like the way she's growing on this entertainment center. So I think I'm just going to leave her there. I just really like the look of that. So over here, <laughs> it's my other begonia from Tennessee Tropicals that needs to be watered, which why it's a little limp. <laughs> and it is my begonia stormy sunset. This one, is gigantic. And uh, like I said, I expected small ones, but luckily enough, she fits up here just fine. She has her own little light because I was worried there wouldn't be enough light in this corner for my begonia, but it seems to really like it based on these top ones that are feeling themselves. <laughs> What's really nice is that it kind of has this like plummy hue to it, which complements the plants I have here already because my dark lord, and my Rotundifolia both have these burgundy undersides. So kind of just these tones of reds and purple is a theme I like to have here in my family room. So she absolutely fits here phenomenally. And Chris was actually the one to suggest putting her here. I didn't think I had a place for her. So I am super stoked that she has a perfect place and that he helped to kind of find her location. So here we actually have Another philodendron heteracium, and this is a variegated one. So this one initially started growing really slow when I first got it. It barely produced any growth at all, but recently it's really started to grow, and I'm super excited about that. I absolutely love this form of the heteraceums, and I just can't wait to see it just grow so large and fantastic. And over here we have my Manjulopathos. So this one, again, is really similar to the variegated heteracium, but in terms of growth, as it was producing very slowly, but now it's really starting to produce a lot more. Um, it looks like it's just a little bit less variegated. Um, it was a lot more white to begin with when I first got it, but in the corner it's in, it's a little bit darker. I really don't want to move it, but I, again, I do want that lighter variegation. I think it looks, I think that's one of its best features. It just looks so stunning. Like, why wouldn't you want 
more of this. <laughs> but absolutely gorgeous pothos, completely in love. And with its own light here in my bedroom, I have my Scandapsis Pictus Argareus. And this is my larger version. I do have that smaller one in the family room. I just wanted more. <laughs> so basically I wanted a Scandapsis for my bedroom. Ah, one day when my silver lady grows, I'm gonna propagate her so hard because I just want a bunch of those around my house. There's just something about the design of the silver lady that's just absolutely stunning to me. Scandapsis pictuses are the best. Like, just, they feel so good <laughs> and they look so cute. So these ones were actually losing some of their variegation because there wasn't a light here before, but now there is. So hopefully she regains a lot of her variegation. It's already starting to kind of revert back into its little place, as you can tell here. <laughs> and this lovely girl in my bathroom is my Epipremnum Aurea Marble Queen. And she has definitely been growing super long. So what's really cool, so with her, I've definitely been able to tell that the sunlight's been benefiting. If you look at this one strand, she had a lot of green on this leaf. Then if you go down, it's almost completely green on that one. But then on the one after that, it's pretty much completely variegated. So that's pretty crazy to me how that can just happen. And all her leaves since have been really variegated. So that tells me that the window is definitely a benefit, but that it does take time to work because she had been reverting for a long time. And I chose not to cut that leaf off, but now, like, as you can see her stem, it was so green here, just into this almost completely white color. And I'm kind of amazed at how she's been growing. She looks phenomenal. So here we have my Anthurium radicans, and I believe this is the Dresslary hybrid. Just because the regular radicans I've seen don't look exactly like this one. Just a really cute guy. I've actually been quite obsessed with this one. <laughs> so it's the one that I kind of always have my eye drawn to when I come in here. I mean, that happens with a lot of these guys, I do have to admit. <laughs> but... There's just something about this one. I think it's maybe the lack of velvety leaves and the just kind of unique characteristics of it. It just looks very alligator-like. So the one next to it, we have my Anthurium Crystal Hope. <laughs> so if you've watched my unboxing videos, you'll know that my Crystal Hope and my Silver Bright over here had quite a few more leaves. And the reason I lost them is basically just due to acclimation. They're fine now, they haven't gotten any worse. Really, you're lucky if you don't lose all your leaves <laughs> when you import plants, so I'm glad I at least had one left on each. Then we have one of my Anthurium Warquianums, and she's just stunning. Absolutely love her. So this Queen Anthurium and the one over here, when they arrived, they came in a bit rough, but I don't mind at all. I actually think that makes them pretty cool and unique. So my little warrior leaves. And I'm actually excited because I do got some new growth on the way. And with the Silver Bright, I also have some new growth here. So that's so exciting. She's just absolutely gorgeous. Ah. <laughs> I can never get over the silver veins. And over here we have my Magnificum Dark. He is a stunner. Absolutely love that hue to his leaf. Very gorgeous. <laughs> Even just looking at him, just the darkness to his leaf. It's very similar to like how Regale is so dark, and I just absolutely love that dark color. 
And those veins really pop on this one. All right, for my second shelf over here, this is one of my Papian theoriums. <laughs> and I'm not gonna try to pronounce the name because I'm not good at this one. So this one doesn't have much kind of detail to it. It was the first one I got and I've wanted one of these for a while. But it looks a little different to me than other pappies have that I've seen. This is my second one that I've got. And characteristic wise, it does look more like one. It has that rounder leaf to it. She's really pretty, can't wait. And she's about to start growing a new leaf, but not quite yet. And this one already has one growing. It looks very cute. And this one looks like it has a lot more characteristics to it. The veining is much more pronounced in this one. And back here we have my Anthurium angomarcanum. So velvety, absolutely in love. It has had of a bit of a rough acclimation. <laughs> and over here, we have this beautiful Magnificum. This is actually one I've purchased from Eden CPS. It came with four leaves and it is now growing a new one after some very healthy root growth. Absolutely stunning and significantly larger than the prior growth. So I'm really excited about that. It's just so pretty. And behind that beautiful Magnificum is one of my Anthurium Warcleanum Waterburyanum hybrids. And this is one I actually purchased from the International Air Raid Show. And its leaf actually, unfortunately, had snapped, which is why it's on that. When I had got it and I didn't know, but luckily it is now growing this beautiful new leaf. And I'm very excited to see how big that one gets. So I'll quickly show you my other one. <laughs> this one is in a very rough state. So basically what happened is the two initial leaves that it had when I got it, they basically freaked out when they got to me and one of them was a new leaf. So it got a lot of damage during shipping and Basically, it kind of just deteriorated until it needed to be taken off, unfortunately. Then the second leaf just wasn't faring well, didn't quite like my home. And what happened here is after I removed those two leaves, I thought I was removing just one of the other dead ones, just a piece or a flake, but I actually accidentally ripped this one before it was formed. <laughs> so it's kind of hanging here, which um, is kind of scary. I don't know exactly what's gonna happen here. It seems to be growing healthy, even though it's like that, and it's been like that its whole life. <laughs> so it's just probably gonna be a deformed looking adult, but it's looking really cute and sparkly. Very adorable. All right, so this next one is another one of my Ethereum War Quianums. <laughs> and you'll notice I do have a theme going on, and it's mostly because when a plant has a different variation to it, I do like to collect them. So this one is more round, and I think that's so cute. And I'm absolutely in love with this one. Her name is Luce. Just very pretty. And over here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my OG Anthurium Warquianum. So she basically encountered all my rough kind of learnings <laughs> for Anthuriums. And she still hasn't produced me a new leaf, even though I've had her for quite a bit of time now. I think she's still angry at me from like the beginning. Because I was <laughs> relatively unfamiliar with the proper soil that anthuriums needed and the anthuriums that I did have didn't mind the soil they were in but she minded a whole heck a lot so I learned a lot from her <laughs> so that's kind of just my experimentation 
Some of her markings are from underwatering, some are from overwatering. I think this is going to be a new leaf here. And she actually has a node growing, which is really awesome. Oh, and I did forget to mention that Luce over here is actually growing a new leaf. So that's really awesome. And I can't wait to see what kind of leaf she produces. If it's going to look just like her or like a regular queen, I don't really know. But I'm super excited to find out. I hope it's more like her because I just really like the way she looks. <laughs> so over here, this velvety forgetty eye actually had a bit of a thrip issue at one point. But he's really pretty, really gorgeous, has stunning velvety hues to him. I kind of had to position him weirdly right now because his new leaf started growing behind him. <laughs> so this is, this is a gorgeous new leaf. Cannot wait. He's been growing super quickly, so that'll be really fun to track that progress. <laughs> and down here for one of my other queens. This is actually a wide queen in Therium. So that one's going to be really cool. I absolutely love the wide forms. I think that's going to look freaking stunning when it grows its new leaf. It actually shipped to me with two leaves, I believe. There was one that was really badly damaged and just had a rough time acclimating. This one already looked like this when I got it, but it hasn't really fared much worse. It got like a little bit of damage at the bottom, but it was already broken when I bought it. So not worse, but it's actually been growing just a ton of nodes. I don't know if you can see those nodes there, but it seems super happy, so <laughs> not too bitter about that. Hoping it gives me a new leaf soon. And this is my Magnificum Verde. So it lost some of its other leaves when I got it, but luckily this leaf stood the test of time. <laughs> and he's totally good cool and just chilling. And I'm just kind of waiting for him to do his thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't really want them to grow too many leaves right now. I kind of want them to take that winter break, but I think because a lot of my plants are now just getting to the part where they're really, really happy that they are producing more leaves. So <laughs> even though it's winter, they're kind of still heading strong. So for this plant back here, this is also one of the plants that I got with my Anthurium Crystal Hope and my Silver Bright. It had a really rough time with his acclimation as well, so it's just down to this one, but hasn't gotten worse, so <laughs> we're just kind of chilling. <laughs> and then these two here are both regales. So the one back here, it's a little bit larger. Its venation still isn't as pronounced. Um, very cute. I do have one more though in my indoor greenhouse, which I'm definitely keeping. I'm not sure if I'll be keeping this one. And then over here is one I'm definitely keeping. It's the other plant I got with my Eden CPS Magnificum and it's my little regale here. And it's brand new leaf is absolutely freaking gorgeous. Like just, just look at that. How stunning and absolutely perfect is this leaf? Just, wow. <laughs> I can't wait to see the lengths this one goes to. It just looks absolutely gorgeous. And then down here, I'm not quite sure if this one's alive. It has a little bit of green. It's an Anthurium crystallinum, and it just kind of lost all its leaves upon getting here. And it's kind of hates me, so... <laughs> Then moving up here, getting my ladder because I'm too short for this life. So right here, this guy, sorry if he's hard to see. This is my Anthurium Domino and he's kind of in a rehab now right now. <laughs> so this is him just kind of chilling up here, like <laughs> doing his thing. There is a Doriaki up here too that was shipped with him. That is also rough. So they shipped terribly. I'm gonna tell you right now, the rounder leaves in theories were awful at shipping. So they came all crinkled and they all freaked out, but the roots were amazing. <laughs> so really I'm just waiting on new leaves. And I've actually had these guys quite a while now, thinking I should be getting a new leaf sometime soon. Then over here I have an unknown Anthurium. 
but his leaves feel like the best pajamas. <laughs> so this is his newer leaf, but it grew in a bit deformed. His other pajama-like leaf. Just very nice. So this is my Anthurium bulletas. And before I brought grow lights into my plant room, when fall came around, I did not have enough light and this guy was really reaching toward my window. <laughs> so it's kind of why he's so long. He's just a bit deformed. He was actually growing in when I bought the plant, but seems pretty strong. He's definitely a character. <laughs> Here I have my Anthurium Selby mix. I'm not sure what this is mixed with. It happens, it's just really sturdy and has that kind of purple hue to it. It's very dark and, <laughs> but it's really tiny as well, just like comparison size. Super cute though. <laughs> and then next to it, I have my Monstera. This is my variegated elbow. The variegation on this one is just absolutely beautiful. Absolutely love it. No new leaves yet. I believe it was in my last houseplant tour. So it's just kind of been relaxing. I did make it a little pole. So hopefully that'll start encouraging some new growth on it. Then here, I have my smaller Anthurium clarinervium, the cutest little heart shapes ever. <laughs> Absolutely love this one. Just beautiful. And behind it, this rough looking creature who didn't do well in translit <laughs> is my Thematophyllum cellum. And it's beautiful, it really is. It had the roughest time coming here though. Probably gonna end up cutting this new growth off. It just doesn't look good, but it's an absolutely stunning plant. I just can't wait to see what new leaves it does produce. And this handsome guy is my Anthurium tremulum. He's loving life and has a new leaf. Let me see, just kinda Growing back here, just really, really cute. But I really love this guy. Like I've definitely lately kind of realized the beauty of non-velvety anthuriums and how gorgeous they really are. I just absolutely adore him. And then over here, <laughs> these I know I haven't really introduced to you guys at all. There are probably quite a few here that are going to be surprise plants, and I did that on purpose just so you had some interesting things to look at during this houseplant tour. This one is an Anthurium pink dragon, and it's the variegated form. So it's a lot darker than the next one I'm going to show you, but it's charming. <laughs> I like these, the shape of these leaves, they're a lot different. And sorry if I'm pronouncing this incorrectly, but I believe this is an Anthurium bonflandii, and it is the variegated form. I love, love, love this one. The amount of white in its leaves, just super pretty. And it has these really cute pink petioles on it. Absolutely stunning plant. So this beautiful, beautiful <laughs> Anthurium is actually one that I got on eBay. It was actually an unknown hybrid. So they suspected it was a Steve Knock hybrid and I emailed them actually and Marie got back to me and she did say it does look like one of his 
Clarinervium pedatoridiatum hybrids. So that's exactly the one I was looking for. So I was really excited when she did confirm that. So for all intents and purposes, that's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> and it's so stinking gorgeous. Like the size of it is incredible. And I've absolutely had no acclimation issues with it, which is fantastic. I found that the really small ones have trouble acclimating, but this big one has <laughs> just not been an issue at all. I've had it for a little while now and I'm really surprised at how well it's doing. Up here is my Anthurium vitarifolium. He's doing pretty well. He has a new leaf right there. I have him in a bit of a high up spot just so he has some room to grow. Absolutely adore this one. Then over here, the newest leaf on my Anthurium metallicum. Absolutely stunning. He's just, ugh. <laughs> love, love, love this guy. Like in velvet's what you're looking for. He's got it. <laughs> and this is actually my Anthurium marmoratum, who is missing a lobe right there. <laughs> but he's absolutely stunning. Absolutely love this guy. I love all my plants, as you can tell. I'm just like, love, love, love. <laughs> but super cute. I can't wait for a new leaf on this one. And over here, <laughs> the stump is my Anthurium waterburianum. And he came with one leaf, it was broken. So I'm kind of just dealing with that, <laughs> hoping he can produce one soon. But he's alive, he's just buying his time. <laughs> this sad looking plant here is my Anthurium villanoarum, and it's a large one, but when it was shipped to me, it had some major root rot. The sphagnum was soaking, and well, all the roots rotted off, so it's not in good shape. <laughs> this whole cabinet here, actually, is what I call my Javanini hybrid cabinet. <laughs> so humidity stays pretty high in here. I also have a fan going in these at all times and I just have them off right now just for the sake of this video, but I do keep fans running even in the room all the time <laughs> just to keep that air circulation going. So this is actually my Anthurium X Bulletom and it is a hybrid between Anthurium subsignatum and crystallinum. What's really beautiful about this one is it has these darling red petioles. Like, absolutely stunning. Like, I just can't believe the vibrancy of them. Like, just truly a gorgeous feature on this plant. I love the feel of these leaves too. They have a more leathery feel to them. And they're absolutely gorgeous. So in love with this plant. <laughs> Just wow. All right. Down here is actually my Anthurium red velvet. So it's actually a hybrid with Anthurium regale and Restlary. And over here right next to it, it is also a hybrid of those two, but it is Anthurium voodoo child. <laughs> So they're actually different because they grow differently. So what Jay has done is taken like certain characteristics of these plants and focused on them. So red velvet will actually grow much longer than Voodoo Child and it'll grow into like a brighter red as it comes in. But they are both just absolutely stunning. Just incredibly beautiful. Can't wait for these to get bigger. I've seen some bigger voodoo childs and I'm always so jealous. <laughs> I can't wait for mine to grow. It's just so teeny. He had a new leaf when he was shipped, but that didn't quite make it, unfortunately. Same here with my dark mama. She is beautiful though, and she has plenty of foliage. So got my three beautiful leaves. So she actually, it was funny because she had popped this leaf out right before shipment, so we waited on that one to get hard enough to ship. And then as soon as it was ready, she had another leaf pop out, but unfortunately that didn't make shipping. 
That's okay, though. <laughs> I know she'll produce plenty more. She's been pretty content in here. None of these have had acclimation issues, probably, except for this crystallinum hybrid. And personally, I think that's because crystallinums are a bit finicky, so its tips just got a little brown. But other than that, it hasn't had any other issues. The only kind of leaf loss is really just from the le new leaves. <laughs> I count myself very lucky there. So that's actually the best thing about buying plants from local sellers is that you really don't have to worry about leaf loss like that. And for this next cabinet, so this one's kind of an assortment of plants. <laughs> so this first one here is a type of clarinervium. It's possibly a hybrid. They call it Suljana or King Clarinervium. So what's striking about this one is it's veining and the edges of the leaf are very different from the regular Clarinervium. It's really striking. I can't wait for it to produce more leaves because this one actually, as I imported it from Indonesia, had lost its other leaves. Luckily, the biggest one did survive as most times the older leaves do die first. So the next one is my incredibly dark and Therium forgetii. So the original leaf that I purchased with this plant was a lot lighter. I believe it's in my first video. That one actually died off after growing its next leaf right here. And the reason it's so dark is because I didn't have enough light for them. So they grew really dark. <laughs> so that's not exactly the best policy, but they look freaking fabulous, so. They're growing strong. <laughs> and it looks like he has something new growing down there. I'm not sure what it is yet, but he's gorgeous. I absolutely love my forgetty eye. Like just how stunning are these silvery veins? Absolutely beautiful. Right here is my smaller Anthurium villanoarum. Probably saying that completely wrong. I think it's like vill villanoarium. Okay. <laughs> But luckily this one's been fantastic. This is my third Eden CPS plant, which I know people ask me updates about because a lot of people have had bad experience with it, with the particular seller at least, and I haven't had any issues with my plants. The roots are growing fantastically. The leaves all look phenomenal. And it's so good. I expect the new leaf on this one to look Fantastic. All right, so this trio is from Camilla's House of Plants. <laughs> so this plant right here, my Anthurium doriaki, is the reason you need air circulation. So before I didn't have a fan in here, and these two leaves popped out. While I think they are the cutest things since sliced pie, don't get me wrong, they should have been a lot bigger. So they weren't. They either weren't getting enough light, there wasn't enough air circulation. I have remedied that for future leaves, but for now I have these tiny adorable freaking leaves, which I don't mind, but same thing happened here. So this Doriaki crystallinum hybrid had had major issues acclimating to my environment, as all my crystallinum hybrids seem to have, uh, especially the Doriaki ones. I can't keep around one from freaking out the first like few days or whatever I get it. Like I've been holding on to this leaf for so long. <laughs> but I don't want to let go. New little leaf is a cutie pie, but he is very little. <laughs> so over here is my Crystallinum Magnificum hybrid. It's interesting because I've seen a lot of Crystallinum Magnificums with veining not as pronounced as this one, and I don't know quite what that means, if it's just a natural variation of them or what. But I always assumed if you have crystallina mixed in that your veins would be a lot more pronounced. And I've definitely seen some with veins that are not this pronounced. This is absolutely stunning though, I love it. <laughs> I can't wait for that one to get bigger. So down here is my Anthurium Ace of Spades. <laughs> so he's okay, he's not in the greatest shape. He did suffer um, some underwatering at one point, so he's a bit mad at me. I'm hoping he produces a leaf sometime soon because I've had him for a long time now. <laughs> he is just being extra dramatic. <laughs> Over here is my Anthurium crystallinum, which honestly, I've seen other crystallinums and they look more pronounced in their veining, 
But again, that could be a natural variation of the plant. It does, in fact, have some new growth here, which is really stinking exciting because I've had this one for a while too, and it hasn't given me anything. And I'm glad I now have a fan in here. So I'm hoping this particular one gets a lot larger than its predecessors. A sad looking guy here <laughs> is my Anthurium lapuanum. So as soon as I got him, he freaked out. So he just lost the only leaf he had. He's still alive, he's going strong, but uh, hasn't produced anything for me yet. He is a corrugated Anthurium, which are a lot more finicky. So I'm hoping that I can kind of keep him alive. It's kind of the reason I've just kind of avoided like splendidums and things like that, because I'm worried about keeping the corrugated ones alive. All right, if we pan back around to this side, down here, we have a kind of, I guess you call, basic anthurium. So I know it's the purple flower one. I'm not sure why there's other colored flowers in here. So the story is I went to my local garden center for a friend to get a plant. <laughs> Lo and behold, I came across a bunch of anthuriums of the more common variety. And I have to say, I was kind of blown away. I just think this one was really pretty and I absolutely love it. The flowers are fantastic. The leaves are great. I love just this rounder leaf shape. Like, I think this one's great. Like, <laughs> and I love how full it is. Like, it's pretty much exceeded my expectations, which really surprised me because I've never been one for the flowers. I've never liked them at all. But this one I find stunning. <laughs> there was a red flowered one too that was well into its adult form and honestly I was fighting myself between getting this one and that one because the foliage on that one was striking like it the shape of it it was really beautiful but I was more into the roundness and the purple flower so the fact that it had two characteristics I really liked I opted to get this one and I'm really really happy I did it definitely makes me so happy just looking at it Okay, so I'm gonna start with my Anthuriums on this shelf. So these are all the ones from my last unboxing from Loxa Plant Supplier. So I'll kind of be going over how the acclimation has been with these. So for the one I have named Lux, he's been absolutely fantastic, hasn't lost any leaves. Um, he probably has like just a tiny bit of humidity stress on him, but nothing much at all. <laughs> he's actually been really great. Just kind of happy. And he's absolutely adorable. <laughs> really excited to see how this one grows. Like big leaves on this one I feel like are just gonna look so fantastic. Absolutely cute. And over here we have Stormy and she's been the same way as well. She, <laughs> as you know, is one, the one I pretty much gushed about. I mean, I gushed about all these, but this one in particular, absolutely in love with. Love this green blue hue to her. Has had zero issues with acclimation. Not even that little bit of kind of humidity stress at all. All three leaves still look absolutely stunning and perfect which I'm so surprised at <laughs> just absolutely insane just how good she looks god don't you just love the coloring on this one <laughs> so if you haven't seen that video um, these are all unknown hybrids so I have absolutely no idea what they are but absolutely in love with them there's one in here that the seller does claim to know, but even then I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> uh, just don't you love that? So over here we have Cersei <laughs> and she's supposedly my Ace of Spades and Magnificum hybrid. So don't know if I quite see it just cause it's so circular. I'm honestly not sure where the circular feature from a lot of hybrids come from, like the Doriaki hybrid and the Domino hybrid, which I've never seen other than one seller. 
but this one has had some issues. So initially one of its leaves, I accidentally kind of knocked off when I was cleaning them. So <laughs> that's a kind of downside there. Then as you can see, it's just been having a little bit of rough time acclimating. This isn't crazy. I kind of expected this to happen. So I don't do anything for my plants for acclimation. So what I do is just kind of give them the humidity and soil that my other plants get and just kind of stick them in that atmosphere and let them acclimate. So <laughs> it's probably not the best philosophy and you could do more. I was thinking about actually getting a heat mat for my plants, but at this time, I just haven't had that much struggle. Usually I'm left with at least one leaf if they have trouble acclimating at all. Luckily, I think this one looks fairly strong. It usually does happen one leaf at a time, so hopefully he's just losing the one and he'll be completely fine otherwise. But, oh gosh, absolutely adore the roundness of this leaf and it actually grows in a more pink color, so I'm totally excited for new growth on this one. One more glance from Stormy. <laughs> Stormy, why are you so pretty? Them glittery veins. Stop. <laughs> so freaking pretty. <laughs> All right. And down here, we have Morgan. So she's kind of tipping a little. I'm going to have to put something in there to help her stabilize. Her leaves are just a bit too heavy. And she, the only acclimation issue she has is right there. As you can see, hasn't had any leaf floss. Looks fantastic. <laughs> So what I like about this hybrid is the shape and the fact that it has this really leathery feel to the leaves. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm just really, really loving this particular hybrid. Like she's just very pretty. Like, oh. I don't know if you can see the texture on her, but it's just so Nice. And next to her, we have Amaret. So she has a little bit of damage here. This leaf might be possibly lost, but it hasn't suffered too much damage. Just a bit more unhealthy looking than this leaf right here. But what's great about this particular leaf is the ruffles that it has. Really cute, just on the edges, these cute, cute ruffles. Absolutely adorable the shape. What's interesting too is most velvety anthuriums are very kind of thick. This one almost feels, I don't know, the closest thing I can have is like to describing it is kind of like just Bible paper or kind of like tracing paper. It's not quite as thin as that, but it's so close to that. It just feels so fragile, but absolutely love it. I think it looks fantastic. I'm so excited to see how it grows as I am all of these. It's beautiful. Just absolutely stunning. Over here, we have had the one with the most issues. Now, I wholeheartedly expected this hybrid to have the most issues. And why is that? It's because all of my crystallinums and my crystallinum hybrids have had issues. So especially the hybrids, all of the Doriaki hybrids that have crystallinum in it, everything that's round. I feel like the round anthuriums and crystallinum anthuriums just struggle with acclimation. And on top of that, this was a small one. So I knew right away that this was going to be a struggle. But as you can see, my little solstice here, she's absolutely stunning. Has just such glittery leaves. Absolutely adore it. She is down to her last one, <laughs> which isn't a surprise. I actually have to remove some of the guys on here. I'm hoping very much that this one is going to be my survivor. She looks pretty good. So holding out hope for this one. I have Rowena here. So she's had a bit of a struggle with her acclimation. Oh my God, she's so gorgeous though, isn't she? <laughs> so she has been losing one leaf after another. I'm hoping that slows down. Let me check this leaf here. This leaf looks still pretty good, but yeah, she's definitely been struggling. 
I'm actually considering getting another humidifier over right to put right by her just so she has a little bit of help. I didn't want to stick her in my greenhouse right away just because she is so new and I just wasn't sure if she had anything on her. And it's a lot of close contact in that greenhouse. If she had her own kind of area, I would be okay with it, but <laughs> she's just absolutely stunning. I love the kind of pappy shape that she has, but she's definitely not a pappy. <laughs> I don't even know if she has it mixed in just because the only thing that kind of looks like it is the shape and not much else. Really pretty though. Oh gosh, I love her. <laughs> All right, then we have Ambrose here. This is a bit of me and acclimation. So my favorite leaf, which was probably his newest one, I ripped off by accident during the cleaning process. So that really sucked. But other than that, he's just been getting these minor little marks and nothing serious. So he's looking pretty good. Little Ambrose. <laughs> really love his texture, but the shape is really unique and I like that a lot. So cute. All right, so over here I have my Mars Hydro Light. So I eventually want to get something clear to put here. I'm probably going to go to Lowe's actually tonight. <laughs> and get something cut up for these shelves so the light can go through them because while it reaches some that poke out, very shaded over here. So I don't quite like that. So up here we have one of my Philodendron Florida ghosts and his new leaf is definitely basking in the light over there. Absolutely love this plant. And I love how dark the leaves do eventually get. So cute. And I love how he's just like spreading out. He definitely is liking his location. <laughs> so right below him, we have my Florida Beauty, who does not have much variegation to her. And I had introduced beneficial nematodes at one point and had to keep the soil moist. And it was just too much for her. So she did lose a leaf. My Periso Verde also lost a leaf which made me sad, but it wasn't my favorite leaf, so it was okay. So this is kind of a plain Jane right now. There's a little bit of variegation on this one, but there's also a new leaf coming in, so hopefully I have something more to show you the next time. Down below her, my beautiful child, my philodendron giganteum, and this is the variegated form. <laughs> oh my god, just look at her. She's stunning. So she, if you watch my tropical plant supply video, her and then my Philodendron Moonlight Variegated are both from there. And they have been just doing wonderfully. Just look at that leaf. How beautiful is that? It's so glossy too. <laughs> Absolutely adore it. Just a fantastic and beautiful plant. It has a new leaf on the way too, which is exciting. Wow. Ah, just love that. And my beautiful Philodendron Moonlight. Just absolutely adore this guy. I love how lime colored the leaves are and the variegation on it. I just think it looks really stunning. Just, wow, absolutely incredible. Got its new leaf coming in, looking cute, ready to come out. <laughs> and then up here we have my pink syngonium. So initially when I didn't have syngoniums, I really wanted the pink one. That was kind of just always on my wish list. And <laughs> I got it from like, for like three bucks from Lowe's. And I absolutely love it. I just love how it just looks like it's been blushed on this color of pink on top. I just think it looks really, really cute. It's hard, I feel like, to even see it on the camera, 
just how chalky it looks in person, but oh my gosh. I absolutely love it. Such a cute baby. Oh my gosh, look at her. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. This beautiful one over here, I think it's called a Frosted Heart. I feel like it has a few other names too, but oh my god. What a stunning syngonium. Just the colors on it. Like, ugh, that veining. It's just everything. Like, it almost to me looks like fingerprints. And it's got its little new leaf, which is super exciting. Just adore it. And both of these two syngoniums have this very chalk-like look to them. And I really like that. Just super pretty. All right, and for this next philodendron, I think this was called a uh, Makoi. I'll put the name below so you know. Just can't quite remember. So what I like about this one is that it has such a like tree leaf look to it. Just really like the shape and the color. It's very nice. It's very spread out too. So if you do decide you want to plant like this, just make sure you definitely have the room. <laughs> Fall, nature vibes, and I really love it. Down here, hey, sleepy girl, ah, you were preparing for this moment. <laughs> so this lovely velvety goodness is my Varicosum Melanocrysum hybrid. <laughs> so I absolutely love, love, love this one. It has a little bit of that redness on the back its leaves are just super super velvety just how gorgeous is that <laughs> i definitely have a hard time just trying not to touch it just absolutely stunning oh my god i can never get over how velvety it looks though it's just incredible <sighs> And the awesome thing is, it is growing a new leaf. So this is also the one I got from Tropical Plant Supply. So if you can't tell, I definitely recommend this seller. <laughs> he has some amazing plants. Over here is my other girl, is my other plant from Tropical Plant Supply. It's a philodendron snowdrift. There's one that actually looks like this that has jungle in its name. That's what I was thinking of. I think it was like jungle boogie. I just love the way these leaves look. They look like they're almost like dusted. They have just like this very dusty look to the color. And their leaves are actually supposed to grow in white. This one doesn't look too white right now, but I think it's because it's not getting too much light. I think once I adjust my cabinet and add that clear top, that once it gets more light, the new leaves will definitely grow in much more white. But they definitely, over time, turn into this dusty green color, which is really pretty. And I specifically love this one because of the variegation. Just, oh God, so cute. <laughs> All right, then there's the Philodendron Strawberry Shake, which I'm pretty sure doesn't like me that much because it just hasn't grown. <laughs> it's had like a faux new leaf growing forever, but hasn't done anything with it. What's nice is what I did just notice is it does have a node like growing in right there. So that's new. <laughs> it's just absolutely stunning. I really love the redness of the petioles. That is definitely one of the favorite characteristics of mine. Just really beautiful plant. Hoping probably the next summer that it grows a lot more <laughs> because it actually hasn't, I think it only it's grown one new leaf with me and it wasn't variegated, but I think it just didn't get enough light. But either way, the red petioles are just everything. <laughs> like I think that looks beautiful. I don't even really mind if it doesn't have variegation. I just want this red color to stay. Love that. And down here, this is my Calathea Princess Jessie. And she's really, really hating life right now. So I repotted her into just a plastic nursery pot from Terracotta because she wasn't doing her best in Terracotta and that she was always very thirsty. So I thought putting her in non-Terracotta would make her happy. For some reason, she threw a fit. So... <laughs> She's looking a bit like crispy. She's never had these like issues before. I don't really know what's going on. Like she doesn't have any pests. 
she's just throwing a freaking fit. I think she just wasn't okay with being repotted. So note to you guys and note to self, don't repot your calathea in the fall slash about to be winter time <laughs> because they don't like it. <laughs> Although I did the same thing for my other calathea and they are freaking fine. So I think she's a bit extra bouge. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's kind of that with her. Hoping she recovers soon. This was a gift from my boyfriend, so I really don't want her to die on me. It means a lot for her to keep alive. <laughs> and the last one on this side is my philodendron birkin. Ah, oh, this one's so great. This one I got from Bagana Pot Plants. So it shipped to me pretty wrinkled. It unfurled a little bit on its ends, but it's still kind of wrinkled. It's really gorgeous though. So with this leaf, what I particularly like is how dark it is. It really makes the kind of veins stand out. Really, really pretty. And with this leaf, I love how light it is because it also makes it stand out for different reasons entirely. It actually makes the black pop a lot. Just beautiful, beautiful leaves. Like this is definitely a plant that I didn't know if I wanted and having it in my collection now, it's definitely something I really enjoy looking at. Just a complete stunner. And I don't know if you noticed, but on this side, I've been saying philodendron a lot. That's because this whole desk is pretty much my wall or desk of philodendron <laughs> with a few other plants sprinkled throughout because I don't know where else to put them. So my syngonias, begonias, and calatheas. <laughs> right, girl? And then, of course, like all my pusheen stuff because no, I'm not five. I just really like cute things and cats and yeah. Oh, and if you... Uh, <laughs> rub his belly and his eyes glow like how cool is that i know i'm like a child okay. <laughs> all right up here is my philodendron caramel marble so since i got the mars hydrolite it's been love and life so it hasn't grown a new leaf for me yet since i've had it which is insane <laughs> i mean i've had one new leaf but other than that nothing but it's been getting these pink hues on it with more light and it's so cute so i think it's just really happy and also it's spread apart a lot recently so i think this light has just kind of put this flare into its step because <laughs> it's really feeling itself just freaking love and life and this spectacular creature is my philodendron lime fiddle absolutely love the tones of green on this one this is definitely has, has got to be one of my favorite plants and I'm absolutely excited to see how big it gets. I just want these leaves to be absolutely gigantic. Just simply gorgeous. And right next to it, I have another philodendron Florida ghost. And this is the one that they call the mint variety. It's the same plant. It just looks a little bit different in terms of these little stripes they have going on in the leaves, like veins, I guess you can call it a type of variegation, but it's not the kind. Obviously this one does the same thing as the other Florida ghosts where they grow in a lighter color and turn dark, but I find that the darker leaves on this Florida ghost are never truly as dark. So here we have my Maranta Silver Band who got a little neglected at one point. <laughs> So he did end up losing some leaves. I actually watered him with just unfiltered water and that was a mistake because he got some browning. He's in a really nice fresh potting mix and he's been getting better water. So I'm hoping for a ton of new growth with this one. This is also <laughs> a gift for my boyfriend. I swear I'm not purposely like neglecting these. <laughs> And then over here, this wonderful, wonderful specimen is my philodendron Delatai. And he is so big. I absolutely love him. Just how amazing. I was so excited to get this one. And he's just doing really well. <laughs> now, as I mentioned before, the Periso, Pericio Verde did lose a leaf. He's growing one up there. But uh, my favorite leaf is still on here. So the translation for its name is actually Green Paradise, which I find very beautiful. It really is a pretty plant. <laughs> Such a cute guy. And he has these really adorable just pink edges 
I absolutely adore that about it. It's just such a unique feature. Like, I don't know why, but plants with pink edges, I just have this really like fascination for. And up here we have my Circestus mirabilis, my little drama queen. Let me bring this guy down so you can see him properly. Gorgeous, gorgeous plant. This is one that I consider to be my boyfriend's plant because it reminds me of him. <laughs> and it allows me to buy more plants while saying it's his. So, ha ha ha. Just a really, really beautiful and stunning plant. But never forget to water this one because he's so dramatic when he hasn't been watered and that was a big mistake that I've made a few times. <laughs> And over here, yes, if you've been watching my channel, you had no idea I had this. And that's because I kind of wanted it to be a surprise for my houseplant tour. So yes, I have a variegated bilati now. I absolutely love, love, love this plant. Just absolutely stunning. The only acclimation issues I've had it's just some kind of browning here. It seems to have stopped now, which is excellent. And then some browning on this leaf here. But, oh gosh. And look at this leaf, like, oh my God. I can't get over how beautiful the variegation on this plant is. It's truly stunning. When I was looking for them, I was definitely making sure I got one with a decent amount of variegation. I wanted a lot of green, a lot of other colors. So I love like these lime colors, the typical yellow colors. I think it's just absolutely stunning. It has everything I would want in a variegated bilati. And I'm so, so very excited to have it grow. I just want this one to be super gigantic. And I know it's going to do so excellent. <laughs> Along with my lime fiddle, I just need these to be gigantic right now. I just think they're going to be both, they're, all the plants are going to be stunning as they're gigantic. But I think these are the ones that, gosh, I just absolutely can't wait for it. Even the regular bilati, I'm super excited for that to happen with. But the variegated one, it's just... The variegation looks so excellent on this one that I think that's just going to look fantastic as it grows. And I did forget to mention this bilati was from Tropical Plant Supply as well, as were these two right here. And this is my Philodendron Bilati Adabapawensi Hybrid, which I love so very much. I adore the darker hues of the leaf, just absolutely beautiful. And I had obtained this cutting a while back and I thought it was a regular bilati, but now having the other bilati that I have, I've realized that this is <laughs> most definitely the philodendron bilati adabapoensi hybrid as well. They look pretty much exactly alike, except this one's just much larger, but oh God, look how beautiful this leaf is. It's just to die for, but it's about time to pot up. It took forever to root, I'm not sure why. <laughs> I also got this cutting from Apartment Botanist. So it's my Philodendron Burley Marks and it's the variegated form. And it rooted fairly quickly. They, I got them both months back. This one's been potted a little while now and he's excellent. Just the variegation on this one. I got my choice of cuttings for this one. I mean, for the other one as well. <laughs> and. I was so excited to obtain this one. The variegation is everything I would want. It's absolutely stunning. And it's interesting because I wasn't interested in Burley Marks before. And then I got this one. And after I got this one, I actually went to Florida for the Air Raid show. And at a Home Depot, they had a regular Burley Marks for like five bucks. So I picked that up. And I just really like this plant now. Like I had zero interest in it before. And now I'm just kind of obsessed. Like, I think it's super pretty. I think like I absolutely adore my philodendrons. Like, yes, I have a strong passion for my anthuriums, but my philodendrons, I have a lot, a lot of love for. 
So up here is my Adapapuensi. So yes, they have to have like every single kind <laughs> of this family. So this leaf, I don't think is gonna develop. It was growing when I got it. It's already starting to grow a new leaf here. So I think it's just kind of neglecting this leaf. It probably just got stunted from shipping. I'm gonna give it a little more time. At this time, I don't think it'll be growing into anything. But I absolutely love this plant. It has this kind of, this lighter green color to it, almost silver in certain lights. So beautiful. Absolutely love my Adabapuensi. And it's so fun to say. It's just like Adabapuensi, Adabapuensi, Adabapuensi. <laughs> like, I love it. <laughs> like, oh, like how cute is that? Let me get this guy out of here. Just how incredible. Both these two next to each other, best friends. And here's the new leaf on this one who's growing in, which I'm really excited about. But I don't even mind having two of this one. Like I want <laughs> this one to grow so big and it's exciting that he's a much larger leaf. So definitely can't wait to see how all of these grow. And over here, one who doesn't match the bunch is my Syngonium. So this is the variegated form. I actually just kind of got this one on a whim. I think it was like $20 when I got it. So it was when I started collecting my Syngoniums. And this is one that if I had gotten Syngonium, this is one I would definitely would have wanted. And this one's variegation is excellent. So only acclimation issue on this one is this little edge here. But other than that, this white leaf has been holding on pretty well. I've had it for quite a few months now, so he's a trooper. I did need to put him on a pole or something though. He's a, he definitely needs it. <laughs> and up here are three of my begonias. So the last of them. <laughs> I actually don't know what this one's called. I adore just kind of the red undersides on this leaf. And I'm very big on the red undersides for some reason, but it's really beautiful. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. And in front here is my Begonia Pavonina. So I just watered her, she's a little droopy. This one actually has some damage on its petiole, so it'll just be forever droopy. <laughs> but this is a beautiful plant and it definitely wants to grow for me. When I was doing my terrarium video, like the new leaf had broke off because it was too upset about all the hassle of the terrarium video, but it's already grown a new one here and it actually has a new one growing down there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's been growing a lot, which I'm really surprised at the rate. I thought I would have to keep it in a terrarium, but it seems to be doing just fine. <laughs> so I guess I'll keep it out here for now, unless uh, she tells me I should do otherwise. And here's another begonia that I have no idea for the name. <laughs> so I had it in a different location at one point and it didn't like it. So I think it was just getting too much of my fan and it got crispy here. The new leaves are actually growing in like the super raspberry color. I don't know if it's going to keep that or eventually just turn to this, but it's really pretty. I love this because it has this green sheen to it. Just a super, super stunning leaf. And down here is my Monstera stendoliana, and this is the variegated form. So <laughs> in the beginning, I thought it was extremely unhappy. Its leaves just kind of kept curling in, but after some time, it just got adjusted. I just did water it, so that's the reason it's kind of curled right now, but it's been doing fantastically. It's already put out new growth and it's kind of a non-issue plant, which I'm really, really happy about. It's really pretty <laughs> and it's nice to get a plant with a good amount of variegation and different kinds. Like I like this darker green color, this lighter green color. Like I just really definitely appreciate all kinds of variegation, the light kind, the yellow kind, all the kinds. <laughs> And yes, you didn't notice her before, and that's because I just totally forgot to put her back in her place. And this is my Philodendron Pink Princess. So this is the one I actually purchased from Gabriella's Plants. I was on the wait list for this plant, so I did finally get it. So that's super exciting. Initially, this was a plant I wasn't too interested in, but then after time, I realized this was a really pretty cute plant. I really love the, the red petioles on it. Red petioles are definitely my thing. I don't know if I could show you, but those petioles just look like candy. They are so freaking cute. <laughs> so I'm really excited for this one. And 
I hope it grows up very beautifully. It doesn't have a ton of variegation right now, if you notice on its leaves, but it's new leaf here. Does seem to have a good amount on it. I'm not too worried about it because I like this plant even without variegation. So I'm just excited to see what this particular one will produce. But if you've been curious what the Gabrielle's plants, Pink Princes, look like in person, this is pretty much it. <laughs> so they're not as big as you would expect. They aren't as variegated. Once they start producing a lot of more variegation, that's when they start to ship them out. But I think it's really cute and really, really adorable. And I would highly recommend getting one of these because I think the price point was like 50 or $60. They don't have them for sale right now, but they should soon as they are nearing the end of their wait list. So that's super exciting for anyone that's looking to get one. And down here we have my Calathea Musaica. Right, Nina girl? <laughs> I repotted this one and my Bella just like I did my Princess Jessie and they are faring much better. While I don't have a lot of Calathea left, these have kind of made the cut and <laughs> the Musaica is definitely one of Chris's favorites, so it isn't one I'm gonna be getting rid of. It's a very, very gorgeous plant. Like it just definitely looks like artwork. And then we have my Bella here who hasn't really given me any new growth. I'm more hopeful for next summer. I just think it's went through a lot acclimation wise and it kind of just never really settled in. I actually had it in a sunnier spot than I should and it got a bit burnt so I know it's mad at me. <laughs> but I absolutely love this one. It has very strong leaves like the structures they feel very thick and it's very gorgeous. This one's just going to grow up to be absolutely stunning and I would highly recommend it. I bought mine off of eBay a while back but I know Tropical Plant Supply is selling these right now if you were interested. So I almost <laughs> was tempted just to get another one but I already have one so why would I get a second one? That's a problem for, my, for me definitely. <laughs> and then before I almost forget I have my Calathea rubifarba. So this one has very fuzzy leaves and purple undersides. And for the most part, it has these purple undersides. <laughs> I love this because it's so stinging fuzzy <laughs> and fuzzy plants are just everything. <laughs> Texture is something that's really important to me. So that is something I was really excited about, but I used to have this one in terracotta. It's much happier out of terracotta. I just find my calathea don't do as well in there. For some people it might, but this one in particular did not like it. <laughs> and right next to that, it is my philodendron majesty from NSC Tropicals. So I eventually need to put this on a bigger pole. It's gonna grow very similar to my dark lord. As you can tell, it has that greenness on top, those burgundy undersides. But I think this one, is advertised as getting a lot darker, but they are such similar plants. I almost expect them to look like twins. Very interesting. I'll actually just kind of insert an adult photo right here, just so you can kind of see the differences between the two. Like right now, it's very young, <laughs> so it doesn't have a lot of its black, but the less light you give, the more black it will get. Very cute plant though, and I can't wait to get for it to just get gigantic like my Dark Lord. I think it's gonna look absolutely stunning. So thank you so much for watching this tour. I really hope you enjoyed it. I know that was a super long video and I'm sorry it was so long. I do hope you did enjoy it though. If you did like this really long video format, please let me know. I do plan, I think on future videos to splitting it up into like in my Anthurium collection, my Philodendron collection, things like that. And then maybe doing specific house plant tours not as often, maybe once a year, and just focus on specific collections, just so um, these videos aren't as long. But if you do happen to love the length of the video, you just wanna see that all the time, that's fine. I think I'll probably do them about twice a year, but still undecided yet. But thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell icon if you want to be notified for any future videos. I do post every Wednesday, and thank you so much for watching.